Okay, calculus students, today we're going to get away from the big thick uh, definition uh, from the textbook of the tangent line as well as the differentiation rule and get into the basic differentiation rules which a lot of people have come to think of as the basic shortcut rules. Okay, so let's take a look here. Our objective and our essential question. Our objective is the student will learn and implement the basic rules of differentiation. What I'm going to have you doing is applying those rules to differentiation, uh, of, I'm sorry, rules of differentiation to provided functions. And your essential question will be, uh, do I recognize when and where to apply the new formulas and do I know how to apply them? Okay, you can always, as always, I'm going to go as fast as I probably can through the, uh, the video uh, with a little bit of commentary mixed in and things like that. But anytime you need more time to get uh, something copied down, you can always press the pause and then uh, hit play when you're ready to move on or, of course, rewind as needed. So let's take a look here. Okay, so as I said, now that we've gone through the long textbook method of differentiation, let's start looking at some of the shortcuts. Now, I'm assuming you're probably all familiar with these, but we'll take a look at them one at a time anyway. The first one and the most basic one is called the constant rule. Okay, and this is actually a small version of something larger that's coming up here in a moment. And the rule is basically that the derivative of a constant function is zero. Now, of course, the term constant function means it, it has no variability to it, and that basically means it, it has no variables. Okay, its, its values are locked in place uh, by the nature of the function itself. Okay, so the rule basically says the derivative with respect to x of some value c, a constant value. Okay, the result of that is always zero, and this is assuming that, of course, c is a real number. Okay, we're going to spend our time on the real number line, not the complex number line, so we won't be dealing with imaginaries uh, dealing with these derivatives. Okay, a couple of examples, not that I think you need them, but just because I've got them, so here they come. Uh, so here we go, if f of x equals negative 3, then find f prime of x. Now, of course, keep in mind, we picked up this notation uh, yesterday, or last time in class, and the f prime is, of course, the abbreviation for derivative. Okay, so finding the derivative of a constant function, as stated before, the derivative is 0. Now, as you can imagine, constant functions can take many forms. It's, it's not uh, mandatory that they just come flat out and just be a number straight off of the number line. You could be looking at something that's more along the lines of this. If y equals k pi squared and k is an element of the integers, find. And then we have that other notation, dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. Well, once you get finished kind of weeding through all of the notations and things that are in there, uh, it should eventually dawn on you that what you're looking at is an integer multiple of pi squared, and that's just a constant. Okay, It's an irrational constant, but it is just a constant. So finding its derivative is no big deal, and they are both zero. So I showed you those, uh, not because I thought you needed those examples, but I did want to refresh your memory on the two different notations, f prime of x and d dy dx. Okay. Now the power rule. This is the one that most people do appreciate the most because it does save us from having to go through the big nasty definition that we had. The derivative of a function raised to a power is, okay, so we're looking at a derivative with respect to x of some term x to the nth. Now, the power rule basically states that uh, whatever your exponent was, okay, that exponent will show up in constant form uh, as a coefficient in front of the variable. And in so doing, the exponent that did exist for your variable will be reduced by one integer. Okay. And, of course, we're talking about n being a rational number. Okay, so for example, if you have a function of x cubed and you're instructed to find the derivative f prime of x, okay, well, it's a pretty simple procedure. You've got x cubed, okay, the uh, exponent 3 is going to move out front of the variable and it's going to become its new 
coefficient. Now, if there was a coefficient already out there, we would be multiplying the two coefficients together. Okay, so the three drops out front. Now I've got a three kind of penciled in there because that was the original exponent. However, that original exponent is going to be dropped down by one unit, and you're going to have 3x squared. Okay, that is much, much faster than going through the definition of a derivative like we have for the last couple of days. Okay, but you got to learn to walk before you can run. Okay. Now, as you can imagine, our exponents can do a lot of different things if given enough leeway. So here we have a function g of x, and g is defined as the cube root of x, and we're instructed to find the derivative of g. Okay. Well, the best thing and probably the most appropriate thing for you to do until you get a real good understanding of things here is to convert out of radical form and into exponential form. Okay, so uh, the cube root of x is equivalent to x raised to the one-third power. To take the derivative, we're going to pull the exponent off, and we're going to put it down in front of the variable, so we're going to get a new coefficient of one-third, and then our existing exponent is reduced by one full unit. So from positive one-third minus a full unit, we'll drop it down to negative two-thirds. Okay. Now, negative exponents is kind of a no-no, so what we will do is we will retransfer x out of the numerator back to the denominator so that he can have his uh, positive exponent. And it could be, uh, just depending on the way the problem is formatted or what the problem is looking for, we might also have to turn that x to the two-thirds power back into a radical. Uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of formats do not particularly care for fractional exponents inside of a fraction. So we might have to convert back to a radical there, but you get the idea. Okay, another example here. The reciprocal of x squared is equal to y. Find the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, on terms like this, I find it easiest to actually uh, get rid of the rational expression. So what I would do is I would pull that x back up into the numerator by changing the uh, exponent back to a negative, so we've got x to the negative 2, and then run the derivative by the shortcut. I'm going to pull the negative 2 down out in front of the x to become a coefficient. We're going to drop the exponent down one more value, and that will be down to a negative 3. Okay, once again, you got the negative exponent going on there. So in order to combat the negative exponent, we're going to take x back out of the numerator, send it to the denominator, then it can be positive. So we have the negative of 2 over x cubed. Okay. Another rule is referred to as the constant multiple rule. This one's a little helpful can help unclutter a problem before you have to get into it. The derivative of a function being multiplied by a constant c is, okay, so what we have here is we have the derivative with respect to x of some function that is being multiplied by some constant, okay, and the rule basically says you may pull that constant or a factor, okay, if you were, pull that out in front of the problem, and then execute the derivative of the function, and you will end up with the same result. Okay, so for example, we have y equals 2 over x. Find the, uh, the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. Now, obviously, the x is a variable, and it's going to need a little attention as far as the derivative is concerned, Okay, but the 2 is basically uh, unaffected here. So what we can do is we can take that 2, and we can move it basically to a uh, almost like a position of distribution, okay, pulling it out of the problem out front, and then just kind of letting the problem take its course behind it and then do the derivative of what was left behind after that value was factored forward. Okay, so now we're looking at finding the derivative of x to the negative 1. Okay, so again, the negative 1 power is going to drop down out front as a coefficient, and then the exponent will drop down one unit from its value, which will bring it down to a negative 2. 
Okay, so there's the two that's sitting there waiting, and the derivative is now done. It can be redistributed into the problem, and there you go. Now, if you're wondering, well, do you really have to do that? Does it does it really make any difference if you factor it out? Uh, yeah, it actually does a little bit. We're going to get into some more complicated rules here very shortly. Okay, so you will see uh, what would have needed to happen if you had not factored that constant out by the constant multiple rule. Okay, only thing to do left was to drop the x back into the denominator so the exponent could be positive. That's better mathematical format. Okay, how about this one? f of x equals 2 times the square root of x. I think you get the idea here, but we're going to have a look at it anyway. Okay, let's get the radical out of there, convert back into uh, exponential form. Okay, that will give us... Uh, x to the 1 half. The 2 is a constant, so we can factor it forward and then just worry about the derivative of the variable x to the 1 half. Now the derivative of x to the 1 half, hopefully you can see it in your mind already, is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then of course the constant 2 is out there waiting. And conveniently, that 2 and the 1 half, uh, the two coefficients there, are going to cancel out. And all we have to do is worry about the variable. The variable does have a negative exponent, so that's going to be something we have to drop back into the denominator. And that's going to put us in the denominator x over uh, the reciprocal of x to the 1 half. Or, if you convert it back into radical form, the reciprocal of the square root of x. Okay. One final example, I believe this is the last one. y equals negative 3x halves. Find the derivative of y with respect to x. And nothing new. Only diff this time the constant is a fraction, which changes nothing. For, uh, factor forward the negative 3 halves, and then we'll worry about the derivative of x. Okay. Well, the derivative of x, obviously we have a 1 exponent on that x, so our new coefficient will be a 1, but then I'll also drop our exponent's power down to 0. So let's make sure we remember this one. Law 5 of the uh, laws of exponents deals with the possibility that you might end up with a 0 as an exponent, and the basic standing rule is anything raised to the 0 power is going to be the value of 1. So inside of those square brackets, we have 1 times 1 which is obviously 1, multiplied by negative 3 halves is negative 3 halves. There's your derivative. Okay, now sum and difference rules. Okay, basically all this does is establish that a bunch of terms can be added and subtracted together without really altering what's going on. You simply apply the rules uh, one term at a time, okay, for uh, sums and differences. Okay. So the derivative of x of f of x plus or minus g of x is simply equal to the derivative of the function f plus or minus, depending on what the original problem had, the derivative of the function g. Okay. So for example, you just got more of the same things happening all in one problem. Okay, so if a function wants to go x cubed minus 4x plus 5 and we're instructed to find the derivative, well, that's fine. We reuse the, uh, the power rule and apply it, and we end up with 3x squared minus 4. Notice that we lose the plus 5 on the end of the problem due to the constant rule. The derivative of a constant is 0. Another if g of x equals negative of x to the fourth halves plus 3x cubed minus 2x, find the derivative of g. Okay, well, the first term there, actually all the terms there, we can see that we have the constant rule in place. So in each case, we'll factor forward a constant, treat the derivative of the remaining variables, and then reapply the constant to it. Okay, and at the uh, next step there, uh, we'll have 4x cubed in the numerator. Okay, 3x cubed in the, uh, I'm sorry, 3x cubed becomes 9x squared, and negative 2x becomes negative 2. And you got a little bit of simplification that can be done there on the front, or the lead term, and that simplifies down to negative 2x cubed. 
Okay. Now these rules are going to greatly uh, shorten the amount of work. Uh, they are uh, just kind of the uh, the beginning points of a lot of things we're going to be watching out for on derivatives. Okay. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be practicing page 114, numbers 3 through 18, uh, dealing with finding the derivatives of functions. 25 through 30, uh, talk about completing a table using rewriting and differentiation and simplifying. Uh, I don't need you to write that out step by step. I just simply want you to find the derivative of the problems that are entailed on those six questions as well. So that is it. I appreciate you finding time to listen in on the video, and I'll see you in class.